everybody, James O'Hare here. Now, Disney has had a lot of films under their belts, and they've even had some good games based on those films. Well, in some cases, are even better than the films themselves. Mostly Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> but nowadays, Disney is warming up nice and gently to every film property known to mankind. To make a little bit of the Benjamins. Regardless, I feel that the early to late 2000s were a prime time for Disney and Pixar films. And no way is that a better example than 2009's Disney Pixar's Up! Up was released in 2009, and man is this a fantastic movie. It's the story of an elderly man named Carl Fredrickson, who goes on an adventure to South America with a young boy named Russell, to place his house on Paradise Falls, as him and his deceased wife planned to. Along the way, he meets a bird named Kevin and a dog named Doug, and a legendary adventurer turns sadistic bad guy, Charles Mutz. The film has been renowned as a masterpiece, and it's a fantastic. It has great animation, great music, a fantastic story, and the emotional levels of this movie will hit you is so high that you literally need the first 10 minutes and you'll be crying a river. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> yes, this film will punch you so hard in the feels and will tear your heart straight down the middle into two pieces. Anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. Naturally, I've had a lot of video games based on it, but the one I'm going to play is the PS2 version. So, let's pop the game in and see what I think. Well, in PS2 fashion, before the title screen we get a cutscene where Carl promises Ellie to keep his promise to get the house to Paradise Falls. It's cute the first time you see it, but after a while, you'll want to skip it. The title screen is nice, with dead ass the most calming music I've ever heard. Anyway, so we get to create a profile, but we can only choose from three letters, so I went with my initials. The first level is called Crash Landings. The cutscene in this level is pretty solid. It shows that Carl is just floating in his house when all of a sudden he gets a knock on the door. And it happens to be Russell, who's somehow gone onto his house, supposedly mid-flight. This scene is where Russell and Carl are stuck together, but the dialogue is pretty fast. So, after they get through a storm, Russell tells us that he followed his map and his GPS before the idiot yeets it out of the window. The house does land pretty quickly on the ground, and it starts to float away. Which, I should point out, is 30 minutes into the film's runtime. Yeah, I checked. That's 22% of the movie! The game immediately skips right out of the box! It doesn't even try to summarize it or give us clips from the movie or anything. No! All of a sudden, here's Russell and Carl in a flying house on their way to Paradise Falls. No context whatsoever. If you weren't already familiar with the film, you'd be totally lost here. The next cutscene is the intro to the level, only now it looks more like the in-game graphics. We get a tutorial through the level that explains the controls and all the mechanics that we have to do throughout the game, such as platforming, rope swinging, using a seesaw to fly Russell to higher platforms, and using Carl's cane to help Russell up to those higher platforms. This game heavily relies on using both characters to make it through the level. You have to use both characters to traverse the terrain. It's like Crash to Insanity, except no genitals get shredded on metal poles. Christ! <laughs> the levels are simply structured, but look beautiful. From the foggy mountains and tapuis, to the tropical jungles and the rainforest, to flying around, jumping from platform to platform. Each level also features a pretty cool mechanic. At the end of certain levels, you unlock other tools, such as a rope to abseil across a mountain, which results in some pretty tricky gameplay, a lantern to go through the caves a la Legend of Zelda, and playing golf to hit enemies. What? Oh yeah, because that's a great way to deal with an enemy. <gasps> Oh no, it's a heartless! Oh, I guess golf does work as a way to beat enemies. The graphics do look good, well, for PS2 graphics, but the models look like they were made out of clay then dipped in wax. Seriously, I mean, you could stick them on in an art museum and they'll make total sense. This is where I should mention that the game was also released on PSP, so it's a port, but it came from the same generation. I don't know. So, there are going to be some drawbacks. Well, it gets a pass for that at least, but at least they look like the movie's characters. I'm looking at you, Phoenix Games. I mean, 
I've seen worse, and it's better than anything that this rainbow of broken dreams could ever come up with. Have you seen Back to the Future? I know it's 8-bit, but LJN, come on. At least colour him to have the red jacket. Come on, buddy. The gameplay is also designed very well. The platforming feels responsive, however, certain jumps can be challenging. For example, using the high platform to reach certain points, or the dangling of the rope can be hard with precision. Depth perception is also pretty bullshit. In the house floating sections, they can also be tricky, causing you many falls. But the biggest kick in the ball bag is the log raft stages. This thing turns like a tank and speeds like Sonic. You have to press the X button to keep it moving, and there's no turbo button on PS2, so prepare to break your thumbs. Turning is the worst. You must plan to get through something like crocodiles, otherwise they'll hit you and then you'll rage harder than a pro Fortnite player! Is Fortnite still a thing? I don't know, maybe Among Us took over too quickly and I don't really know. Wow, I just really aged myself for a 20 year old. You also get the chance to play as Doug and Kevin to help you in certain stages to help you get through certain puzzles, and they even have their own little special abilities. And you can even ride Kevin in chase levels. Um, yes. The game does get very annoying from time to time. The constant back and forth between character to character to collect everything slows down the level to a screeching halt. It's constantly back and forward, back and forward, back and forward, back and forward. I'm playing up, not tennis. Music sometimes hardly changes between certain levels, and some levels even share the same tracks. Although, in some cases, it doesn't really fit the level of gameplay. Like, for example, level 17. The chase music is playing, but it doesn't match the gameplay. This is a personal nitpick, but it feels weird to be playing a score that has an urgency tone when the platforming is just the same buddy co-op gameplay. The trial and error deaths in certain cases, as I already explained, can be the most annoying thing. But what's really annoying is that the characters never shut up. I swear, Russell always says, I will do this explode, you always ready. And Carl can't even go a few seconds without saying, I'm okay. The problem is that they talk every time. Every time you do something, every time you pick up an item, every time you squash a bug, every time you platform, even when you stand freaking still, they won't stop yakety yakety yakety! Jesus Christ, superstar, this is getting really annoying. Also, good musical, top of the line. What I also love about this game is you don't necessarily die, instead, you lose energy and are tired. And sure, you can't move boxes or grab ledges, but at least you're not dying. To replenish your health, however, all you need to do is find fruit, which you find in trees or just growing out of the ground. What kind of fruits are these? What I find really interesting is that you feel adventurous while playing this game. The music and the scenery complement them brilliantly, and the structure of the levels actually make you feel like you're on this adventure. The giant air jumps and the house sailing levels had my jaw dropping when I was a kid, and they're still dropping every time I play this. And it was so satisfying to land those giant jumps. It was so thrilling. But that comes to a cost of bullshit, boring mechanics. And nowhere is that relevant than level 50. You must carry a rock, which is tied to the house. If you get far away from said rock, you have to go all the way back, which would be fine, except the levels aren't designed to compensate. There's a rope section, teeter-totters, spaces that make it impossible to reach without jumping. I mean, escort missions suck, but at least the levels are designed with them in mind. I hated this level to my very core when I was a kid, and I still hate it now. It's the only level that made me look up a walkthrough just to get through it casually. CASUALLY! Why didn't they make this an escort mission? Or a house sailing mission? It would have been a great mix of Kevin's chase sequences and the platforming to Pooey levels. I mean, I understand logically you need weight in strong winds, but having to constantly drop and pick up the rock is so tedious. This level also treats you like an idiot. Like, hey kids and basement dwellers, you wanna beat this level and see the rest of up the video game? Well, drag a bloody house tied to a rock and blindly jump at ledges. That'll keep you busy. Have fun, asshole. The later levels are just your standard buddy co-op puzzle gameplay with some chase scenes and rough thrown in. We actually meet Charles Munns as well, but cutscenes are the only time we see him. 
You know the drill. Meet the explorer, he's insane, burns a house, go save Kevin. Having months restricted to only cutscenes is kinda stupid and a missed opportunity. We could have had the epic elderly duel between Munz and Carl. That would have been epic. You could have made it a quick time event or an actual sword fight like you see in Dark Souls or whatever. Or, you know, just have him in the cutscene, chasing around, take all the fun away. Still pretty fun though. To make up for this, however, we have an epic final battle. It's a plane battle. You have to fly as Doug shooting down planes and finally destroy the engines. I only managed to destroy all the planes to defend the house, but the engine? Hey, not so much. Now, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me explain. Put this into perspective. There is a time limit of 20 seconds. Think about it. 20 seconds to destroy eight engines on a giant blip. It ain't no piece of cake. Anyway, Mums in the house fall to the bottom of the ground, or hell for all I care, and the team take off in the glorious finale and roll the credits. So that was Up the Video Game, a fun adventure that outweighs its problems. The levels are fun, they look amazing, the music is beautiful and well conducted, and the story stays true to the movie. But it isn't afraid to take reasonable liberties. The repetition of the levels and the music not matching is a featured problem and the problems are more skill based or game mechanics and stupid AI but quite honestly this game is just so damn fun and structurally sound that it all doesn't matter. Up the video game gets 7 out of 10. Adventure is out there indeed. It was a toss up between a 6 or a 7 but I settled on a 7 because the feeling of an explorer you get while playing this game and exploring the beautiful landscape just did it for me. Well anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did like this video, hit that like button and if you're new to this channel, welcome. Please subscribe and turn on channel post notifications. Have a video idea or just want to say hi, then comment down below. I love you all and have a fantastic day. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.